Now we'll uh, hear uh, the progress of the National Aquaculture Development Plan. Uh, Dr. Jeff Silverstein will, from the USDA will provide some opening comments with more detail about the plan from David O'Brien from the US, from NOAA Department of Aquaculture and from Andy Germerlitz from the USDA. Jeff, it's all yours. Okay, uh, Matt, thanks so much for the introduction. What a great video, uh, exciting introduction. I really uh, appreciate the opportunity to present here today. Thanks to you, Dr. Parker and the US Aquaculture Society. I'm Jeff Silverstein. I work for the US Department of Agriculture's Agricultural Research Service, and I'm one of, the th one of three co-chairs for the National Science and Technology Council's Subcommittee on Aquaculture. I bring wa warm regards from my co-chairs, Deren Babrat, who's with the uh, uh, NSTC, and Paul Doremus with NOAA Fisheries. What a turbulent time we're in right now. I mean, not, not to mention the election and the late night continuing resolution for the federal government. Uh, you know, COVID has really disrupted everything. And uh, I want to appreciate USAS for finding a way to bring us together for this session. It looks really uh, excellent. Aquaculture in particular and seafood in general has been particularly hard hit. We'll he hear more details about this from other presenters this morning. On the topic of the National Aquaculture Development Plan, there's certainly never been a better time or more urgency for this, uh, for this kind of plan. So the subcommittee on aquaculture that I'm representing today is a federal interagency coordinating group meant to increase the overall effectiveness and productivity of the federal aquaculture development enterprise. The, the subcommittee is a statutory subcommittee that operates under the Committee on the Environment of the National Science and Technology Council. As uh, Dr. Parker mentioned, the executive order on seafood competitiveness was issued in May and calls on the subcommittee to update the National Aquaculture Development Plan that was first outlined in the National Aquaculture Act in 1980. But first, I wanted to just mention a couple of points about the, economic, uh, the executive order. Uh, of course, COVID-19 has had major impacts on all of our efforts and work towards the uh, meeting the objectives set out uh, is ongoing. There's been really excellent progress. Uh, NOAA has been moving forward on the aquaculture opportunity areas that, uh, that Matt pointed out. And APHIS has really made striking progress on the aquaculture health plan. In some cases, there have been delays not only disruptions to the schedules uh, because of COVID, and other, but there's been a lot of important work that the development, uh, that the departments and agencies have been working on, such as the Coronavirus Food Assistance Program, CFAP, and CFAP2. I wanna just take a moment to acknowledge and thank many of the people uh, in this meeting for their input to improvements in the CFAP program and for making CFAP2 a much improved program. So on many fronts, there's more attention on aquaculture than ever before. And there's real momentum to make a difference. Uh, you know, another example is Congress uh, working to advance US aquaculture. There's been a, an updated Aqua Act uh, just reintroduced September 24th with a notable addition to the financial provisions to help ease transition into this sector. The federal government as a whole is really modernizing its thinking on how we incorporate seafood into our national food production. We're being more responsive to the importance of food, uh, fish for food security. Now is the time to have more of these conversations focused on collaborations and innovation to capitalize on this momentum. And one aspect around innovation might be the USDA's Ag Innovation Agenda, which I think Andy and Dave will discuss in the Economic Development Plan uh, update. So let me turn back to the National Aquaculture Development Plan. The Subcommittee on Aquaculture has been working over the past 18 months on two key elements of the NADP. First, there's the Science Planning Task Force and then the Regulatory Efficiency Task Force. The Science Planning Task Force 
is chaired by Caird Rexroad from USDA and includes representatives from Department of Commerce, Department of Energy, Department of Interior, Department of State, uh, EPA, uh, NSF, and USAID. The National Strategic Plan for Federal Aquaculture Research has three goals. I'll just briefly list those. Uh, develop, uh, goal one is to develop economic growth through aquaculture. Two, goal two is to improve aquaculture production technologies and inform decision making. Goal three is to uphold animal well being, product safety, and nutritional value. The Regulatory Efficiency Task Force is chaired by Michael Rubino from NOAA and also includes representatives from Interior, EPA, uh, Agriculture, Army Corps of Engineers, OMB, and Health and Human Services. The strategic plan to enhance regulatory efficiency in aquaculture has three goals. Goal one is to improve efficiency in aquaculture permitting and authorization programs. Goal two is to implement the national approach to aquatic animal health management of aquaculture. And goal three is to refine and disseminate tools for aquaculture regulatory management. So each of these task forces, the science and the regulatory efficiency task forces have submitted strategic plans which are, uh, which are now working their way through the NSTC approval process. Both, uh, both task forces have also developed implementation plans to address requirements in the executive order. Together with the strategic plan for the economic development task force, these three plans will form the foundation of the national aquaculture development plan. So this uh, Economic Development Task Force is the third critical element, and the work is underway by an Economic Development Task Force. I want to mention that uh, this task force has been spurred in no small way by encouragement from our colleagues at the National Aquaculture Association. I want to recognize their committed and thoughtful counsel. So now I want to turn, turn over to uh, Mr. David O'Brien, the Deputy Director of the Office of Aquaculture for NOAA, and Andy Jermalowitz, the Director of Business Development Division for Rural Development and Rural Business and the Cooperative Service with USDA. Great. Well, thanks, everyone. Um, really appreciate being invited here today uh, to speak about the this, this current status of the Aquaculture Economic Development Plan. Uh, as Jeff said, uh, my name is David O'Brien. I'm the Deputy Director of the Office of Aquaculture at NOAA Fisheries, and my co-chair is Andy Jermalowitz from USDA Rural Development. Um, we are, we've been working uh, on getting a draft plan together, a draft outline of a plan together, um, and we're getting ready to put it out more formally for public comment, but we've been taking the opportunity to reach out to various stakeholders along the way, and this is a great opportunity for us to get some initial feedback before we put uh, anything in writing for, you know, sort of official uh, feedback in, um, and most likely a federal register notice. So this is a great opportunity. We look forward to sharing where we are now and to hear any initial feedback that this group may have um, uh, on the plan or the, the plan as it currently stands. Next slide, please, Andy. So again, we're just listening at this point early input on this draft plan, um, the, uh, both on the plan itself, but also some strategic recommendations of uh, ways we should consider uh, pulling pieces together. Um, they are presented to encourage discussion and solicit that feedback before the, that the draft outline goes public. Next slide, please. So before we get into the actual outline itself, um, some overarching considerations. Uh, one is the scope. We, we plan to focus particular attention on how federal programs can support economic development um, as, as appropriate given the, the, the context of the uh, subcommittee on aquaculture and various federal programs that, uh, that participate. Uh, but we do plan to address some broader issues as well that may be more appropriate uh, from our standpoint uh, to for industry uh, or other partners to consider implementing, for example, some elements of marketing or private investment. We do want to uh, leave a trail of breadcrumbs, so to speak, um, to have that full picture, that full package of ideas that could really support aquaculture development, um, even things that maybe the federal government are not the best suited to, to implement. Um, 
related to that, we want to talk about federal roles. Um, the, the plan will consider federal roles in, in, in public-private partnerships as part of this plan. Uh, just as an example, what are those appropriate handoff points from government to industry for specific strategies? I think the thing that comes to mind most, uh, most readily is on technology development and transfer. Uh, there's certainly a role for federal labs. There's a role at some point for handing the, that technology off through extension and, and other means uh, to industry partners or other partners. Uh, we'll try to be as specific as we can in, in terms of a strategy for identifying where those handoff points could be. Um, and then lastly, we want to consider uh, targets. Uh, and this, is, this came through loud and clear in some early discussions we had with, with some, some stakeholders. Uh, and I think it's a good general practice for any plan of this type is to have specific targets wherever possible and timelines uh, so we know how we're, how we're making progress and measure progress. Next slide, please, Andy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to hand off to Andy in just a moment here to go through the specific goals, but I did want to start with a, an overview of uh, really the top level goals uh, that we have at this point in the plan. Um, I'll say an overarching goal. Uh, this is, again, draft, but a good sort of tagline that we're working with is we want to help support a robust and resilient domestic aquaculture sector. Um, I should point out, something I should have pointed out at the very beginning, is that while we certainly recognize the, the incredible impacts of COVID-19 that currently are taking place, as well as will likely to continue to take place, um, by design, this is not a COVID-19 response plan. There are other parts of the federal government, including NOAA and USDA and others, uh, different sort of uh, pathways to trying to address the, the needs related to COVID-19. Um, and certainly we want to take the lessons learned from this current situation um, to feed into this plan. However, the need for this plan predated COVID-19 and we certainly hope it's gonna go far beyond uh, when COVID-19 ends. So this is uh, really goes beyond the COVID-19. Uh, that being said, the resilience piece of this overarching goal in particular is really a nod in many ways to COVID-19. How, how do we learn those lessons and build a more resilient sector moving forward? Uh, the goals then, um, in a nutshell, are one, to incentivize industry investment. Secondly, to support infrastructure and workforce development. Third, uh, to expand market opportunities for U.S. aquaculture products. Uh, fourth, uh, to increase public awareness and acceptance. And this is something we, uh, we want to probably have a light touch on. It's because this, this could be a, it's an entire plan in and of itself. Um, but we do want to at least focus uh, some attention on this as, as a way to move forward on an economic development front. Uh, and then lastly, um, and not least, uh, how do we maximize the effectiveness of existing federal programs? With that, I'll hand it off to Andy to go through these, each of these goals and use one slide each uh, with a little more detail. Okay, uh, thank you, Dave, and good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, thank you for having us here. Look forward to sharing some of the work we've done to date. And I also want to really um, echo what Jeff said, uh, excellent video. Um, I think uh, um, hopefully I can get that link and probably take that and use it in some of our outreach activities. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm Andy Jamalowitz. I work with USDA Rural Development in the rural business co-op sector. Uh, so I do have some background with, uh, with, with ag, with farming, and with some of the investments. And um, as the video was talking about how a lot of this activity takes place in um, rural communities, uh, that's, that is our mission. Uh, that is where we work. We work in, um, in, in the rural areas across the country. On, on a lot of the infrastructure and uh, investments, housing and, and business. So, but back to the outline here, um, you know, we're, as um, Jeff and David mentioned, there's been some work already done on the uh, permitting process. Uh, you know, one of the things to um, get a more robust uh, industry, I think, is to have some type of uh, predictable permitting process that if you're producing one type of fish now that maybe you can just transition, you know, to there, uh, try to take away some of the um, the rigor or the the hurdles on the on the per permitting process. A big thing, um, not just to uh, aquaculture, but in general is the access to capital. Um, how do we you know, encourage investor awareness and interest, and then you know facilitating that access? Uh, you know, again, the video um, you know, that was shared this morning. This is an opportunity. How can we use the resources we have now um, with our 
I mean, rural development in particular, we work with a lot of lending communities, a lot of bankers. How do we, you know, how can we help support um, creating an awareness among some potential investors and uh, uh, venture capitalists on opportunities available in aquaculture? Uh, we talk about risk management. This is this is a huge thing on you know, any type of business. How do we mitigate risk, and what type of uh, uh, resources and tools are available uh, through the federal government or or outside? Um, uh, a big thing like uh, we have in rural development are our loan guarantee funds. That uh, these make um, lending much more attractive. You may have lenders who would not be even interested in. Um, you know, an aquaculture project because of either uh, a lack of knowledge or, or concern. However, when you come in using a federal loan guarantee program that has the good faith of the federal government behind it, uh, allows for much more, much more flexible terms, uh, you know, longer terms, uh, can you know, offer a better interest rate that's beneficial to both the borrower as well as the lender. And lastly, here we're talking about incentives. Uh, what type of you know incentives currently exist out there? You know, we want to be looking at some of the things on the opportunities and opportunity zones, uh, new market tax credits. There's multiple state level tax credit programs. How do we, you know, either a create the awareness of, or even fine tune and find out how these can be applied to investments in aquaculture? Uh, one of the things I think Dave, I, and probably many of you in the audience, uh, there, I, my observation is there, there is a lack of some of the economic data. And so how can we approve that? Even from the USDA side, how can we you know, work to collect more meaningful data and quality data? It's not necessarily the quantity. I think it's the quality of data. So uh, are there opportunities for us to invest or develop or support you know any type of system that is going to help the industry overall with the you know with data as we all know data kind of drives decision making now and so there is that it's a critical need to have timely accurate data and and again uh, we've kind of led to this earlier is you know a lot of this a lot of activities are regionalized or localized is getting a better handle on what type of state and regional initiatives are out there and how they can be either integrated and leveraged um, uh, nationally. Um, we're talking about now the support for the infrastructure and workforce development. Um, Dave, feel free to drive in because some of these are um, very specific to aquaculture. That's not my skill. But when we start talking about things like, uh, again, like some of the ponds or the hatcheries that um, these are investments. They take uh, they take dollars to to build and to you know, bring in new technology and to support the uh, from the production, but also the processing and marketing. What opportunities do we have either from the you know from the federal government maybe to jumpstart some of this? But then how do we take it all into then the private sector where they realize there's opportunity and that there's going to be a willingness to provide capital into these. Uh, um, um, enterprises. Uh, we're talking about educating and training a skilled aquaculture workforce. Uh, that's, um, I think we're all recognizing that there's a lot of te technological advancements um, we've seen applied in the livestock and dairy sectors, um, you know, doing a, you know, I think I've read recently about a digital dairy that is um, taking, you know, trying to be more efficient by using technology. Similar things will happen in the uh, aquaculture area, and there will be a need for that type of worker training. In addition to the training that's just necessary on a regular basis, on working at a on a port or working in a processing plant, how do we create? Um, uh, and again, it's not necessarily the quantity of jobs, but how can we create some quality jobs that are paying livable wages and that um, make an opportunity for you know a young person who you know coming up that there is a career in the seafood and aquaculture industry. Uh, we mentioned earlier a lot about the need for access to capital, but I think there's really a, a huge need for the, um, lack of better words, technical assistance. When we're talking about business planning and training, um, having these types of resources, there are a number of um, 
things that USDA supports in terms of innovation centers, uh, business incubators, business accelerators, um, none maybe particularly for aquaculture, but some of this is general. But this just type of training to either uh, for a new start, for a business looking to expand, um, for or, uh, a business looking to you know, bring on a new project. Uh, the, the same thing here on uh, technology transfer and, and extension. Uh, USDA is the you know, home of agriculture extension um, you know, as you know, budgets and um, capacity has, has kind of dissipated over the, uh, the years, but there is still a robust uh, community within the extension network to support you know, aquaculture. Uh, one of the things Dave and I have done, we've already connected with some of the extension staff across the country and hopefully through some of this planning that we can help um, you know usda or actually even you know extension expand the opportunities to um, you know deliver more support for the people on the ground um, again on infrastructure physical infrastructure and this is something where uh, rural development can come in through a program like our business and industry loan guarantee um, for you know processing capacity, new plant, boats, um, you know you know trucks, transportation, refrigeration. Uh, there are a ton of opportunities for you know different types of investments um, through again federal lending programs, as well as again hopefully as a jump start, but then bringing in the private sector to look to do these uh, type of investments. Andy, you have five minutes. Oh, geez, okay. Um, product development, uh, market, market opportunities. Uh, we're talking about um, um, uh, just, just new product development and the, you know, what's out there again, we mentioned some of the innovation centers, uh, you know, business incubators. Uh, a big thing I think is uh, with the value added products, um, you know, capitalizing there rather than just selling, you know, a commodity fish, you know, finding a way to uh, package or pre-process something that for the consumer. Um, I'm just going to keep moving because we've got five minutes and we still got a bit to cover. Um, uh, the increasing public awareness and acceptance. So one thing I think we really looked at is um, how can we, you know, in, integrate uh, the fishing and recreational communities into interest. And one of them as an opportunity for working with uh, um, existing working waterfronts and coastal communities. Um, there is a ton of uh, farmers markets out there. Um, you know, we'd like to see some opportunities and more development and expansion of some um, seafood markets. Uh, we've talked about this one here too, is uh, the benefit of communicating to the public, um, you know, enhancing the health benefits of seafood and the sustainability and the you know, environmental performance of U.S. aquaculture. Uh, last one. Uh, what we were ho also hoping for as we move forward is that we would create a front door um, to the federal programs, uh, a single port of entry, um, a web portal, lack of better words, to for people interested. We do something similar to this at USDA for you know for I believe we call it farmers.org for people interested in farming. We would we conceive something of being very similar to this for aquaculture, but not just USDA, but looking at you know economic development agency, um, NOAA, NIST, um, um, to I don't want to say one-stop shop, but uh, it would be something similar, but people looking to find out what resource, resources out there uh, in the federal government. Um, and again, uh, explore some opportunities to, uh, to add or you know, expand some of our programs. You know, within USDA, we have a number of programs that target, there may not be, um, you know, they could be modified. Um, they could, you know, have some emphasis that we're looking for investments to be made in aquaculture, or um, you know even the creation of new programs, but uh, there are opportunities. We are we will be looking at some of these going forward. Uh, Dave, I'm going to turn over to you here for a minute. Okay, hey, thanks, Andy. I know we we're short of time, but just another two slides here. Um, two other overarching uh, pieces I wanted to, we wanted to flag for you. Um, one is, and again, this is a, a draft. We'd, be very curious to get your thoughts um, to the extent we have time now or, or as we put out uh, more formal 
uh, draft for, for consideration and public comment. But one thing we're looking at is using a clustering as a, uh, as a baseline sort of tool strategy for as we approach economic development, um, which is basically putting things in sort of geographic clusters um, to get those synergistic benefits um, and get a critical mass of public and private investments. Um, this is something that um, rural development does, uh, I think on a regular basis, other economic development strategies do the same thing. Um, so it's something we would want to pursue as a, a sort of go-to strategy for aquaculture development as well. Um, and then the last thing I wanna say, well not the last thing, second to last thing I wanna say here, um, is just a point to and make sure this group is aware of USDA's agriculture innovation agenda. Um, as Andy sort of alluded to multiple times, there's you know, USDA does have a lot of programs, uh, many of which are already being used by the aquaculture community, but I think there's room to strengthen those ties um, and for to so that we can really get aquaculture as one of the the main areas ideally of, of emphasis for some of these programs. Uh, this one in particular, the Ag Innovation Agenda, there's actually a request for information to the public. It's open right now through uh, early November. Um, and the goal really fits quite well with aquaculture. Um, the goal of increasing agriculture production by 40% uh, while cutting the environmental footprint. I think we all know that aquaculture, even, even fin fish, but especially shellfish and algae, compare very favorably across most metrics of environmental performance with the you know, use of water. You know, how much water is required or land use or feed in to feed out, uh, carbon footprint. So I think aquaculture could be, and I, I think I would argue should be, a, um, a key component to this ag animation agenda. We wanna make sure that the folks behind this agenda um, you know, hear from all the various communities, including aquaculture. So I encourage you to go to that link and, and provide whatever comments you think are, are appropriate. And the very last slide, please, Andy, is uh, just for folks, if you do wanna provide comments to myself and Andy, uh, either now or in the future, we just set up a brand new email address uh, aquaculture eco dev uh, at usda.gov. Uh, even though it's a USDA address, that will come to me as well uh, in NOAA, as well as Paul Doremus. So feel free to send us your comments there. Um, and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. I had one, what I hope would be a short answer question uh, come up during your presentation. Uh, Emmanuel Briquette wanted to know if the National Aquaculture Development Plan would equally promote offshore and inland aquaculture. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, yes. Thank you very much.